Day of Defeat is an old Gold Source game dating back to May 1st, 2003. It's a simple World War II shooter with the classic Doughboy vs. Sauerkraut matchup, America vs. Germany. It's a feud as old as the 1900s. The game is a simple class-based objective shooter, kind of like TF2. While it doesn't feature any of the crazy movement of TF2 or the super refined gunplay of the way Counter-Strike, it's still a fun Source game that's still played today by many people. However, most people nowadays play the more refined and overall better version as Day of Defeat Source, which released on September 26, 2005. The game is essentially the same as the original, with just better graphics, and it's on the Source engine, making it better overall. This is a pretty cheap Source game. It's only really 10 bucks during most times, and it really lowers down to like a dollar during the Steam Summer and Winter sales. It's a really good old Source game that I would highly recommend that you play with your friends for some good old World War II fun. Day of Defeat, as mentioned before, is a class-based objective shooter much like TF2. The game features six classes, all with unique guns and equipment that suit their role. In order of appearance, you have the Rifleman, who carries a powerful semi-auto rifle that's a one-shot kill of the body. He also carries rifle-mounted grenades that can be launched farther than regular grenades can be thrown. Next, you have the Assault, who carries a relatively weak SMG, but carries a smoke grenade, which is vital to any successful push. You then have the Support, who carries a fully auto assault rifle and hand grenades, and the Machine Gunner, who carries a large belt-fed machine gun that can one-shot anyone at any range, but is wildly inaccurate when fired from the hip, requiring the gunner to mount his gun on a surface fire it accurately. There's also the Sniper, who, to no one's surprise, has a scoped, bolt-action rifle that's meant for long-range engagements. Finally, there's the Rocketeer, who, who carries a powerful bazooka and a unique close-range secondary weapon. All of these classes have their own strengths and weaknesses that make you play each class differently, adding to the variety of the overall battle. The movement and gunplay of Day Defeat, which I'm now going to refer to as Dodd for simplicity's sake, is very Source-like, which will make it refreshing for players coming from other Source games like TF2 and Counter-Strike. Guns are mostly inaccurate, which makes long-range engagements very unreliable, forcing most players to take close-range engagements within buildings and flank routes. Weaker guns, like the SMGs, require headshots to be effective, while more powerful weapons, like the rifles and machine guns, are shots to the body. It's important to note that this game does have limb damage, meaning that hitting someone in the leg is going to do less damage than the body. Movement is crafted to aid this gunplay, making things like jump shooting impossible within the engine. To compensate, players can sprint for a limited duration and also go prone, which is weird. I don't see that in Source games very often. It also helps increase your accuracy and decreases your recoil. This makes each engagement feel more unique than something like Counter-Strike, because in Counter-Strike, you're not going to fucking see people lying on the ground. In this game, they can be fucking anywhere. They can be on barrels, freaking crates, hiding in grass. They're everywhere, dude. Day of Defeat features two main playable modes, the first being 5CP, which will be very familiar to most TF2 players. Five flags are spread around the map, with two flags being assigned to each team and a middle neutral flag that must be capped by two or more players. The only difference in this version of 5CP is that any flag can be capped at any time, making for some awesome flank plays. It's pretty cool. And the other mode is Demolition, where both teams must plant a bomb at the other team's objective and defend it until it's detonated. Once two bombs have been detonated at the objective, it will be destroyed. The team that blows up both objectives wins the round. Both of these modes are accompanied by well-designed maps and familiar World War II settings like rural farms and destroyed cities, which adds to the overall realism of the game. Overall, Day of the V is a classic Source game that I believe more people who are a fan of other Source games should experience. While it's not a very serious game and not as hardcore as some other World War II shooters, it's still fun. And at the end of the day, that's what games are about, aren't they?